Hello and welcome to PM Personality Profile. My name is Nana Ansakwao the Fourth, and I'm sure you know it, Chief of the Little Republic of Akwamwe Dumasa. And I am beginning to fall in love with this Friday personalities. I've said this and I keep saying it that when we were growing up, not many successful people of our kind would open up to their successes or their challenges. And so we were left to find mentors and stories of people who were not exactly like us. But you know something, getting familiarity and getting your kind really, really matters. It really matters to see champions of your kind. And so we are happy when people decide to open up, welcome you to their home and share their story of how it is they become successful. And today is going to be one of those stories from, you know, from rags to riches. How it is that you need to persist, need to be prudent, need to fight and strive hard and achieve what it is. Most of the times we know they are glory, but the story behind disappears. And so when I say Blue Rose, everybody knows Blue Rose Estate. But maybe when I say Ebo Aqua, you may ask, who is he? Well, he's the founder, CEO of Blue Rose. You thought he slept, woke up and came up with it? You stay tuned and we're coming back with a story that will blow your mind. Don't go away. Thank you very much for staying and this is the exciting part where we get intimate and hear our stories. Uh, so. Every abo is uncle abo, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can't say abo without adding uncle to it, you know. Like. Because abo, we are special. So, you know, so you definitely have to add the uncle. Yes. But let me say thank you very much uh, for granting us the interview. And as I said in my intro, you know, uh, I'm really honored when people open up and say, look, I've decided to share my story. Because some time ago, people said, oh, no, 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 look, let me stay in my own corner. But I believe that if the Lord has blessed you, it is, you know, the honor is on you to also direct somebody that, look, don't take this path as a wrong path or take this path as a right path. And so for that, I say, you know, thank you for granting us the interview. You are welcome. But before I even go back to where you were born and how you grew up, you know, why Blue Rose? Not that there's anything wrong, sounds very sexy, but why Blue Rose? <laughs> This this one question that I've answered over a million times. Oh, please, uh, Anytime time anybody here, so why blue rose? Uh, I started this small company, and when I started, I originally chose Golden Touch. Okay. But the day of registering, that's uh, August '89. Uh -huh. When I, I got to the register, the name Blue Rose just dropped. Wow. It just dropped, and it dropped with the meaning. The blues is something that people are yearning to see, mm -hmm. but they are yet to see it. And you are going to be special, you are going to be a solution. And I just accepted that and I, I used that name, Blue Rose. Well, we like it. Sometimes <laughs> people ask me, why is your wife a uh, Rose? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, that's nice. Uh, so but I'm going to go take you all the way back. Uh, you know, where were you born? I was born at Ejumakuba. It's in the central region. Mm -hmm. It's a small village, very nice and peaceful village. <laughs> and my mother was a, a petty trader. He was doing materials. Those times we call it material. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and my father was a teacher who later turned to be an education officer. Okay. Okay. I mean, judging from your background today, I mean, would we be correct to say, look, father left some lands, family inheritance? Um, I, it was never so. Uh, actually, my mother, who Sengi Hadidri took care of wow. me, um, he was not rich. He was just a, a petty trader. Mm -hmm. But he made sure that I'm fully educated because I was the first boy. Okay. So he did everything possible to make sure that I go to school. What down secondary? Yes, I, I started at Eshim. Okay. Uh, Eshim is just closer to Ejmakoba. Okay. And I, I was not fortunate, I didn't get to school at Ban because the school was full. Okay. So my, I have to go to the next town called Eshim, Ejmakoba Eshim. Mm -hmm. So I did 
some years there. Then later, my mom said that, oh, Benma, de, Benma ne titino. So he sent me to my dad at Sopon. Okay. So I did a bit of primary school at Sopon Methodist Primary B School. Then later, I did my, I continued at Abu Dunkaw mm -hmm. Elementary School. And I was very good in maths and science. Okay. They were my best subjects. Best subjects. Yeah. So that's where I completed elementary form four. Four, four. Before going to a dance So elementary form four, from there, uh, I was at a point, my dad left Abu Dunkau. Okay. So I was left there alone whilst I was in a, a bad elementary form three. So then alone. I was, yes, I was staying alone. And I quite remember I was staying at late UK Hakuman's house. He was the, uh, the Ghana first chief executive of uh, World Coco. Okay. So I was staying there and I was doing backyard farming to cater for myself. So I was planting corn, cassava, and I was making my own benku, coco. <laughs> so just after form four, I said, that, you know, I cannot live all alone. So my sister had then moved to Accra, so my sister asked me to come. So when I came, he, you know, took me to Asen Mansu School. Okay. So I did my first year at Asen Mansu School. Mm -hmm. Then second year, I was moved to Odan School. Okay. What, what, was it fun in those days, Odan School? Ah, Odan School. School. I didn't know any part of Eastern Region. Okay. So apparently my sister, was a friend to the head, uh, the headmaster. Mm -hmm. The headmaster of Odansk School's sister was a friend to my sister. Mm -hmm. So I said, as much was too far, so they said, okay, I can get you Odan. So I was taken to Tudu Station. I have to find my way to Odan. And I didn't know any part of Eastern region. Mm -hmm. So I got to Odan. And those times were time that you can meet people like the size of your father in the school. <laughs> so we met big guys like Washiguru and no, they were big guys. Some of them were sleeping in their own mattress, you know, Vodou mattress. Some of them came to school with their own pijoka. That's the kind of school I'm talking. Some of them can, you know, jump from first floor to the ground floor. Some of them can use their head to break coconuts. They use their teeth to open sardines. This were the kind of jungle. I got into. <laughs> it was very terrifying. No, they can go to where they sell bread or other things. They will just put the light off and they will scatter every bread. <laughs> so initially, you know, it was like a juggle. But by God grace, we were able to survive. And I tell you, anybody who survived under that condition, you are prepared for life. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when you were in Odan Secondary School, I mean, from five, what, what, what were your dreams then? Um, I've always liked <laughs> to uh, be a farmer. Okay. So I remember when I was a little kid, my dad bought me a t-shirt called Farmers of Tomorrow. <laughs> so, because apparently when I was in primary school, mm -hmm. I was taking care of my grandmother's uh, sheep. Okay. And when you take care of the sheep, when they give birth, uh, you take one, they also take one. Okay. So at, even at the younger age, I had, you know, I was wearing sheep. Mm -hmm. And I quite remember my senior sister, when he's going to school, sometimes they will sell my sheep to pay her fees. Uh, and they will say that, oh, when you grow up, you also take care of you. <laughs> so I wanted to be a farmer. Okay. And, you know, I, so that was my passion. Wow. So in school too, I love flowers. And we have this particular flower, it's called Forget Me Not. It give out this whitish, uh, yellowish uh, uh, flower. And the, nice. they smells very good. Yeah. So every evening when I'm going to prep, I'll just pick a few of those flowers. Then I will line them on my table. When I dress my bed weekends, you know, for inspection, then I will decorate my bed with, uh, <laughs> with the flowers. So, you know, I was a bit <laughs> romantic. <laughs> and I love flowers. So just after school, after sixth form, okay. I was posted, you know, then after sixth form, you do a one year national service. Okay. So I was posted to fish farming. Okay. A department. 
So I was doing the fish farming and I was also visiting the few flower shops that we have in Accra. Mm -hmm. Then the only two flower shops we had in Accra was the uh, one at Techinungwa Junction and one at North Kanesi around um, Whole Trinity Junction there. Okay. They were the only two flower shops around. So I befriended them and they became my friends. So I would go there, uh, work with them just to learn. And once I forget, once I was also in second school, anytime I come on vacation, I joined those laborers who are burdened that summer is missing. Okay. And I was a laborer there, so I carry blows, I carry concrete. Over vacation? I, yes. Yeah? I remember I also worked with one Mr. Boyson who also, you know, laid us. So even whilst I was in school, I was learning all those things. Wow. And by the time I, I would go to school, I have my own pocket money mm -hmm. to buy my provision for school. So wow. I will not depend on mm -hmm. my sister. Once he pays the fees, I'm okay, ready to go. Wow, 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 wow. I'm sure today if you tell your <laughs> children to go and lay towels, they'll do it. <laughs> but so, so after Form 5, uh, you, you couldn't go to university because times were hard. Yeah, I know. I did six form. You did I did six, six, form, six form. And yeah. I did science. And I was one of the best students because yeah, I was good in math and science. Yeah. Uh, the languages was a bit problem. Mm -hmm. But I did pass those. Mm -hmm. But my, after six form, my plan was that if I have to go to university, I have to go to university in Israel. <laughs> Why, Why is Israel? Yeah. Because I've heard that their soil is rocky mm -hmm. and yes, so they are best in agri. And I didn't want anything theory. I wanted something practical. So I said, either is I or no university. <laughs> that was my plan. And that time, there was no money to support me to go to Israel to pursue mm -hmm. that great. So, but even whilst I was in school, we had a backyard farm called Big's Farm. Okay. We did it. We have the pepper, we have uh, corn and... So even in the house, 83, when you know, food was scarce, okay. I remember me and my cousin, we would just do our own benku, and sometimes we would take a motivate so that it will sink down, we we'll put a reggae on so that we'll dance, so that we can eat more. <laughs> it was coming from our own farm. And when we were going to school, our sneakers or other things, we were buying from our own money. Wow. At a point, you know, my sister was also importing stuff from Liberia. Mm -hmm. So when they bring them, the boxes, the empty boxes, we pack them, and when they are printed, we send them to Accra to do. And we sell the boxes. I tell you, it's a very lucrative uh, business. <laughs> we sell the boxes and, you know, so every time we're look, looking for ways to, you know, Make we're money. not depending on anybody. Yeah. We had a small pottery farm in the house that we were taking care. So anything we need, we make sure that mm -hmm. we provide. We're not looking up to my sister or anybody too. But where, where did that desire for survival come from? The desire for survival, no. I had that when I was in Abudukau. I was there alone. Yeah. And my mom was in Ijmakuban, my dad was in Sopon. And I have to find a way to cater for myself and also go to school. Mm -hmm. So I, the backyard farm, I did the backyard farm. I used the car cable to make trap around the farm. So when I get one grass, uh, no, for two weeks, I have my kodum race to I have my benku, and in the morning, I have my cocoa, and I'm done for. The, for the you day. get it? So, I learned how to depend on myself at that age. It was a very difficult experience, mm. but it was a preparation for life in future. So, uh, after sixth form, you staying with your sister. Sister has a saloon. And then you decide to do landscaping in the house. Yes, uh, apparently when I came to Accra first, we were living down Suma. Mm. Later, my sister built a house at Achimota. So we went to Achimota. When we went to Achimota, my sister had a, a saloon. Mm -hmm. Because apparently, the one I followed was a hairdresser. Okay. So we had a saloon. We turned our kitchen into a saloon. Mm -hmm. So people were coming that time saloon, people were lining up. So sometimes even I help them in the saloon. <laughs> how to help them remove the rollers and all that. I don't know whether they still use rollers. <laughs> so I decided to change the uh, the garden design of the house. Oh. So I changed the design. I was also planting flowers because I love it. Mm. 
So I was just doing it. Nobody asked me to do it, but I was doing it. So I did it. And people came and they saw that it was nice. So they would say, oh, who did the garden? So Ebo did it. Then I knew at Mota it was now coming up. Okay. And people were building. So they would call, oh, can you do it for me? Then I said, yes. Though my sister didn't like it because she told her, oh, you have gone to school, you have six from, why do you have to do a dirty job? You know, it's a, a bit demeaning. I would just sneak out, go and do it. When you come home, you say, oh, you are looking dirty. But I was happy with him. Mm -hmm. So I'll do it, and when you do anything and you do it well, they pay you. Mm -hmm. That's one thing I find out. I was not doing it because of the money. money. I was doing it because of my passion, passion for the flowers. And I do it, and they'll pay me, and another person will call me. So I kept doing it. Wow. Then I added flower pots to it. Then there were no flower pots around. Mm -hmm. So I made my own design of flower pots, and it was selling. I did the uh, hexagon, I did the other designs. And later, I also designed the GME style. Then I'll do the flower pot. I put the GME on, on the it. Side. And it was going like bushfire. <laughs> you know, I tell you, flowers, these are businesses that people don't, but I tell you, it's a very, very lucrative good, business. Good. I like the way you started the flower pot because your sister had traveled. Someone owed her money. <laughs> and so you were supposed to keep the money till she came back. By the time she came, had you been, had you been able to sell the flower pots to pay her money back? You see, um, somebody uh, brought uh, my sister's money to me. Apparently, I traveled and it was going to spend about two weeks. And I wanted flower pots. I needed money to buy about two bags of cement. Mm. And I knew that once I do the flower pot, I'll get customers. So quickly, I turned that money around. I bought the two bags of cement. The nearby house had a son. I went to the woman, so can I use some of your son? So you can take it. So I did the flower pot. And I tell you, when I removed the flower pot, the next day it was gone. And I had that double that money. So when it came, the <laughs> money was somewhere. No, nobody has touched it. And I, yeah, I've had my capital. capital. <laughs> Your sister's house now becomes mm. too small because business is booming. Yes, so I was doing the flowers, I was doing the flower pot. So the whole house, everywhere you pass, there was flowers. Mm -hmm. So I, I later it became a nuisance. <laughs> so my sister said, ah, but we'll flowers, maybe I'll be a flowers. So uh, then we were at Achimota. So one day I was passing at the new Achimota new plan mm -hmm. where the Mekom collapsed. Yeah. I that saw the place, land. yes, there was a sawmill mm -hmm. and the rest of were all bush. Very, very bush. There was no house. The only house there was the uh, Achimota new plan. Mm. All the rest were bush. So I saw the land. I said, you know, apparently I also go to church. So mm -hmm. I saw that and I said, Lord, you created this mm -hmm. land. I need this land for my job. I need it for 10 years. <laughs> then I asked the owner. Then they showed me a brokemaker close by. Mm -hmm. He owns the land. So I went to approach. And so you can use it. I said, how much? It's it said free. Because apparently people were using that place as dumping ground and all that thing. So he wanted you to come and... and so <laughs> he was happy for me to use it. So I went, we around it, then I got some wood to make a fence around it. And something happened when I was, you know, I bought a second hand wood to make a fence. Then they were also building a, a house close. Uh, that was mess equipment. Mm -hmm. They were then building. They have also gone to buy some wood. So when they saw my wood, the next day they say I've stolen their wood. Moreover, I've been stolen their wood. <laughs> so they took me to Achimota, my, my uh, seventh mm -hmm. station. Oh dear. They went there, me, I was happy because mm -hmm. I know I've been stolen mm -hmm. wood. And you know, those times was the revolution time that when you say lock him, you mm -hmm. will lock him without a question. <laughs> but. The policeman, so you no, know, I was just standing there and within me I was singing. I was singing praises. <laughs> so the policeman looked at me and the man took her, I said, no, this guy, I can't lock him. Take him. Find out where he, he said he bought the wood. So the man said, okay, now go and show me where I bought the wood. So I showed him and it's okay. <laughs> so, and it was, it was a difficult thing, but I also believe that everything that, every good thing that you are going to start, you will face opposition. Mm. So it's one of the challenges I went through. Mm. And instead it should discourage me, it rather strengthen me. me. And it is also confirmed that I'm on the right path. Let me take a break here and then when I come back, we find out how many flower shops eventually were opened. Don't go. This 
are some of the beautiful stories behind some of the glories that we see that I urge all the young ones to, you know, emulate. It doesn't come on a silver platter. Well, amazing story so far. So you start your first flower shop at the milk, where Melcom is at the Chimota. Where Melcom oh, collapsed. Where Melcom collapsed. That land. It, that particular land. Was your first flower shop? Yes. Wow. And then how many flower shops eventually? What, what, which one next? You see, I started that and I will be there and people will come. So I'm looking for a job. And what I, I did a prayer. My prayer was that God should use me as a blessing. Okay. So whoever comes that will want a job, job, I want to offer that person opportunity to have a job. Okay. So people will come, I want a job. Then whether I have a job or I don't have a job, I have to find a job for you. Wow. So the boys came. I accepted them, and what I was doing is that I'll have this black protein bags. When you come, one day I will let you use the top soil to fill about 100 of them. When you fill 100 of them, I will just go to where they have cut the, they have thrown away the uh, waste flowers. Mm -hmm. Then I will use rooting powder, I'll cut them at the north, use the rooting powder, then I will just fix them in. And I tell you, when you fill, Hundred of the rubber a day, and those time I was paying about three cities a day, and those rubber. If I'm saying every flower one CD, and you do hundred, you see, so it's hundred cities. Mm -hmm. But I pay you three cities. I'm giving you work, and you no know, people throw flowers away, and the flowers on the rubbish, they are all money. <laughs> one see. one tree can give you about one million cities. Wow. If you don't have the eyes to, so even some of the seeds, there are flowers that when you collect the seeds, when you get a cup of the seed, it costs more than a, you know, a bag of cocoa. Wow. Yes. <laughs> but, wow. So, you know, sometimes we don't know. Mm -hmm. This flower on the hedge, we call it medra swan. Mm -hmm. Those flowers, you get a cup of the seed, is very expensive. I see. <laughs> I so I was moving St. John's, I would go and sit somewhere and I'll be picking the seeds. Sometimes I employ somebody, I said, pick a seed for me. You, get, mm -hmm. you pick and I'll pay you. Yeah. So I also made it a point to train a lot of boys. So the more I train the boys, I open satellite shops. So mm -hmm. I open one at the Chimota um, overhead, close to where the big, there's a big drain there. Okay. Uh, now there's a building there. Mm. On the right, I had a shop there. I opened one at Dansuma, uh, where the Vodafone is now. Mm -hmm. Then it was a rubbish dump. Okay. So yeah. side of the rubbish dump, we created and we started a fire shop there. We did one at Dansuma runabout, just before the runabout on your right side, on your left side. Exhibition runabout. Exhibition, Exhibition, Exhibition runabout. runabout. We did one there. And I trained a lot of guys. And I tell you, the people I trained, they are still doing the flowers and they are doing very well. They have their families, they have their house, they have their wow. cars, and they are doing very well. So, you know, that is what gives me that pressure. That at least I can help somebody to come out. And these are people who were, you know, they didn't have formal education. They were just wayside people. And I trained and they are doing very well. So, so at a point, I left the flowers mm -hmm. for them and I called myself. I said, now I'm a garden consultant. <laughs> <laughs> so I took a small office at North Kaneshi, you know, like a two meter by three meter. And I had a secretary there. I said, now I'm a garden consultant. Now I will not fight for small, small jobs. I will do the government job. Wow. And I started lobbying for government job. So I did Ministry of Foreign Affairs. I did work with wow. uh, uh, other services. I did the education, Ghana made castles. I did the... Uh, Petroleum storage depot they did at uh, the place they call uh, before Japan they call that place by water. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, let me tell yeah. you a story that happened. Yeah, it's all grass. Yes, it's when I was doing that time, it was October, and that place, when I went, the people said that oh, this place is dry. October, there's no water. This, and you know, one of my boys just looked at the people and said, "My, my master, he doesn't plan to die." Everything that I plant, they right. need. So when I came, the security man called me and said, this is what your boy told me. And it lifted me up. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder, you know, the boy is doing exploit and now he's also into big time. He's doing the flowers and he has a lot of farms. Wow. He cares about 100 acres of land. Wow. 
doing family, he has his own family, and they are all, those who believe in it are still using it. Wow. So wow. I think there's a lot of work around. Mm. Sometimes people are looking for just a uh, white collar job. I remember one day I went to Accra with my shorts and my T-shirt. I met a classmate of mine who was a pharmacist. He saw me, how dirty, then I was doing for her, how dirty. He just tapped me, he said, Eric, you shall be well. I just look at him, <laughs> I smiled. <laughs> <laughs> I said, yes, if my mates are becoming a doctor, I want to be a doctor. Yeah, I have to have my doctorate where I'm working. So it shall be well. Uh, you look at me and say it shall be well. <laughs> <laughs> but within me, it was well. During that time, I was not looking. You know, I was so in time. But within me, I saw that everything was okay. Well, well, well. No, my soul was. You know, everything was well with me. Because I knew where I am and where I'm going. Well. <laughs> That's a good one. It shall be well. <laughs> yes. So I did the flowers yeah. and I was. So I also remember I worked with ACPSCs at Pokuase. Yeah. I did the lands, landscaping. Wow. So when I was doing the landscaping there, I saw that their house price were a bit high. It was only Ghanaian living outside Ghana that can yep. afford it. Yep, yep. And apparently one of my workers living, used to live in Kaswa, so he said, oh, there are some plots there. And the guy keep warning me that there are plots at Kaswa that they want to, and nobody like Kaswa. So just to satisfy my boy, I followed him one, to, one day to Kaswa. When I, I came, all the chiefs, all the chiefs in Kaswa followed me. In the way, but I said some of them, because nobody like Kaswa, yes, Kaswa was good. That was 90s. And they showed me, 12 plots. And they asked me, how many are you buying? I look at the land and I say, I'm buying all the 12. Two. <laughs> <laughs> so my first plot I bought, I bought the 12 plots. Apparently they were selling for two, two, uh, 200 CDs, old CDs. Uh -huh. Then I don't know, now it will be some passwords. Yeah. I said I want the 12 plots. And I had only 200 CDs. And that can only pay for one plot. Okay. But I said I, I want all the 12 plots. So I use what I have as a deposit. Yeah, then I said, you know, we we'll arrange for payment. You know what God did? Just after that, about a month, my brother, my senior brother called, hey, bro, can you help me to get a land? I said, I have a land at Kaswa. So he was then teaching at Accra Academy. So I got him, two of them. I, apparently, I also added my commission yes, to it. So <laughs> once I bought it, you know, I sold it 300. And all the Accra Academy headmasters, headmaster teachers all came on board. So the 12 foot, I sold 10 to them. So when I sold the 10, I also had it. So they gave me more, 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 plots, more plots. <laughs> <laughs> I see. <laughs> they give me, so people were just coming. So my church, people would ask me, oh, bro. and so I had a plot. So, and you see, when, I bought the plot, my wife didn't like Kaswa because nobody liked yeah. Kaswa. I said, don't worry. So my church member, I said, no. You see, I want to make sure that I bring a lot of elites to Kaswa. Mm. So that when I come and stay here, mm -hmm. I will not be alone. <laughs> yeah, boy, yeah. So I meet people and I will encourage them to, even some of them, I give the land to them free of charge. Just come. I meet people who have a condition problem, then I will tell them, come to Kaswa, you can get your own house. There was uh, this pastor friend of mine, he was renting a house at Fadama. He told me, I said, come on, come to Kaswa, I'll give him a, a, a plot. And now he has a five bedroom house. <laughs> you know, even the, you know, the watchman in our church at North Kanesi, I brought him, now he has a house. <laughs> so I brought a lot of people, thousands of people. Wow. Not all of them for profit, mm -hmm. but most of them just to encourage them to also, and also make sure that my, when I live here, my friends will mm -hmm. live around so that I will not be alone. alone. But one thing I saw, when I also got to Kaswa, something dawned on me and I had this Bible quotation, mm -hmm. and it told me 28, that you know, wherever my footsteps steps have been given unto me. Mm -hmm. So I prayed and I believed that I had that authority. So I said I would dominate the place. Wow. <laughs> yeah. wow. So I was buying and I saw that it was also a virgin place and accessibility is very good. Any time of the day, you can get a, a, a car to Kaswa. Mm -hmm. But then nobody liked the place. So I bought it. So when I was buying the plot, later I decided to build two houses 
I, you know, where I started, mm -hmm. I started my own house. It took me three months to even pay for mm -hmm. the foundation. Wow. I moved into the house when it was quarter roof. Wow. Because I was living at Achimota, I was in a single room. Mm -hmm. That's where I got married. That's why I gave birth to my first son. That's why I gave birth to my second. Not a chamber hall, single mm -hmm. room. About 12 by 13 room. I have a curtain that divides the room. I have my bed. I have two, two in one chair. I have a, a fridge. Then I have a sharp tape recorder. And I have 14 inch Sony TV. Mm -hmm. And that's all I had. And, that's, and my wife also agreed to marry me into that single room. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you, mu you must have said some sweet words. Oh, I never <laughs> said it. No, when you met me, you know that I was a, a gardener with my faded jeans and my T-shirt. And, and it was going to be well. No, it was. <laughs> I had a strong belief in myself and God. Mm. So mm. I know that I'm on the right path. Right, so right. we started like that. And even when my wife gave birth, I did not want my wife to go to the mother. Because if my wife go and stay with the parents, I have to give chop money there and also <laughs> take care of myself. And it will expose me. Uh, the parents will know that, ah, quick, uh, you know. So we will, uh, the first time we was giving birth, we went to Koribu. I took her there two weeks before he gave birth. Two weeks, I was going visiting her in the morning, in the afternoon. I was cooking for her, doing everything. Okay. Because of my experience at Abu I know mm -hmm. how to cook very well. <laughs> I took her. So the day he, he delivered, I went to the parent. I said, oh, my wife has delivered. Yeah. From Kolebu back to my single room. <laughs> so we stayed here. I said, I take it as, assuming we are outside Ghana. When you deliver, you can't tell your mom but to be here. Come and stay with you because too. I didn't want to be exposed so that they would know that <laughs> I can't uh, 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 get it. So we did that. Mm -hmm. Then I said, I don't want to rent a place. Mm. I want to move from this single room. Mm -hmm. That single room was apparently owned by my, mom, my sister. Mm -hmm. I said, from this single room to my own house. So I started this, and my wife didn't like us so much. I said, so, okay, me, I'm a villager, so I'll move. I'll rent a place in need for our crowd. We started, then every weekend, when I'm coming to the site, I'll bring a few of the friends. And when we come, we'll buy a goat, then we'll, we'll kill the goat, and we'll enjoy. So the friends, you know, they Ooh, like that was nice. Every weekend we made our weekend place. We will come. Then one day when we came for weekend, so now now we, we want to stay. We didn't have light. We didn't have water. Hey. No ceiling. We have roof cutter. No fence wall. But we were happy. This is our house. And when we were somewhere up, anytime I come, I just take hanky and I dance around it because you know, looking at me as a gardener to be able to build a house. That was a big thing that whatever happened to me. Wow. So we moved here. You know, it was difficult, mm -hmm. but I, I was very happy mm -hmm. and very appreciative. So we, the plot we bought, I decided to build another two houses for my first two boys. That we had. So any money I get, I put it there because I don't like saving too much because I believe that when you put the money in the bank, you use it. Mm -hmm. So I want the money to, to be where to, I cannot uh, access it. Start working. So I decided to build uh, two houses. So mm -hmm. I was building at a point it was tough, so I wanted to sell. It took me four years and nobody was buying. Right. At a point, somebody came and said, I want this. Then the second one, two people came at the same time. And the two people, all, you know, one paid me, then the other also transferred the money into my account. What? So I called the man and said, oh, Sorry, somebody has bought it, but I have more pros, so I can buy, I can build one for you. But this time, I'll make each of them end suits, because the other one was shared uh -huh. a, a turret. And he agreed. And true to my word, I bought one, improved one for him. Mm -hmm. And he was working with a good man, so he also brought friends. Then, snake people also heard that, oh, they can, I can help them too. So they also came. Wow. So the snake staff was coming, and my friend was also... The so market. I never planned to go into real estate. Wow. It was never planned. I never had a, a business plan. I never had a capital. Even, you know, so I, you know, I was just... It was just a passion to satisfy people. Mm. And because I was satisfying people, I was doing it very well. And because of that, they were also recommending me to other people. Okay. That's why I always say that whatever you are doing, do make sure you do it well. well. You see, sometimes we let money lead us. Yeah. If you let money lead you, you no, know, you won't do it well. 
And I tell you, you will never be satisfied with money. You will never be satisfied with money. I'm not satisfied by money. Mm -hmm. And I don't depend on what I have. I depend on how much I can help people. If somebody needs accommodation, I've given house to people who are watchmen, who are... People come with 5,000, and we said, okay, we'll get you something. And we encourage them, and they have something. I know people who are squatting in people's houses, but by our help, they have their own house. I believe that everybody can have a decent place to live. Wow. If I can build a house, you can. Mm -hmm. Anybody else can. Wow. That's what I believe. Mm -hmm. And whilst I, uh, it's my desire to make sure people get work to do, you know, people... Uh, challenges are also solved. Mm -hmm. God also gives us the reward. The reward wow. is the money and other things that mm -hmm. come along. Mm -hmm. No, mm -hmm. I'm blessed I have four children, four boys. Mm -hmm. They are all big boys now, mm -hmm. and one sweet girl. Mm -hmm. And you no, know, by God's grace, too, I've given a very good education. Uh, three of the boys all went to Ashesha University. Oh, good uh, the last girl is in uh, college in the US. Okay. Uh, I have a lovely wife. If I tell you how I met her, it will shock you. I want to know. You see, <laughs> I bought the suit, the material for the suit for my wedding. One is the, to the wedding on Saturday. <laughs> I to do. Where I bought the material, there was a man there, he called himself a tailor. He said, I can sew it for you. So he messaged me in the same shop and he showed me his tailoring shop at uh, Kanesi, close to where the foot bridge is. Okay. Then I said I should come for fitting Friday evening. Hey. You see, hey. <laughs> I didn't know the shop. <laughs> you, met, you met him at the shop? I met him at the shop. He was coming to buy material. <laughs> and he showed me that Friday evening I should come, come over for fitting. For the next day wedding. For the next day wedding. Hey. Yes. <laughs> and you know what? I believe him. I gave him. I gave it to him. And Friday, I went for a fitting. After that, in the, deep in the night, I got my suit. I had a cream, nice suit. Mm -hmm. you get, apparently, I didn't have money because I have to take care of the lady mm -hmm. first. You get. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we, and we had a very wonderful wedding at North Kanesi. Uh, you know, just after the wedding, I remember when I came But home, you gave her a blue rose then? Uh, no, yeah, you know, <laughs> no, once you deal with rose, you are romantic, so that alone. <laughs> Just after wedding, I didn't have, I didn't plan any honeymoon. A friend of mine, Mr. Renchi, you know, he went to a bri, booked the place for me. Now I hear the place has collapsed. I see. Oh, uh, that's bad. I have to find a way we can get it back because it's that's a place I went for honeymoon. And mm -hmm. when we went for honeymoon, we did, somebody booked that place for three days for us. And which, we did. Which, which place? Which is it? A Brie Gardens. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. okay. Botanical Gardens. Okay, there was there was a hotel in there. Oh, you, there was hotel in <laughs> Charret. Oh, there was I see. a hotel in Charret. Now they are all now in ruins. Wow. That's why I had my honeymoon. So during the day, we will come to the garden, walk around. You know, I like greens. We new elements. Then I didn't have money, so the restaurant they were expensive. So we we'll walk to the town in the afternoon, have a nice food, food in the afternoon. Okay. That will take us for the whole day. Obrashasi. <laughs> <laughs> Obrashasi. <laughs> We're happy. Obrashasi. <laughs> wow. Wow. And my wife, you know, so is a simpleton. So do you know the wonderful thing? When you came back from the honeymoon, people have heard that Ibo has married, the wife is a simpleton, and a lot of people brought stuff for her to sew. <laughs> <laughs> Business is booming. Business was booming. <laughs> so, okay, let's go back to Blue Rose. So, you know, selling two houses, coincidentally, two people buy one, they start bringing people. I mean, so uh, was that the beginning of Blue Rose? That was, no, you see, Blue Rose began when I started uh, uh, Flora. Mm -hmm. I registered Blue Rose Florist. Okay. It was Blue Rose Florist. Okay. okay. Okay, that was the beginning. Okay. So, when we started the buildings, mm -hmm. We changed it, Blue Rose Forest, to Blue Rose Limited. Ah. So it's a continuation Station. of the Flora ah. Addison to Blue Rose Limited. Oh, okay. So we are going through that transition. I see, I see, I see, I see, I see. Yeah. So that, that was, I mean, that was the beginning of so the real estate. That, that, that was the beginning of the real estate. And you see, when we started, most of the houses were not affordable. So we decided that we we'll put two million in affordable housing. Mm -hmm. We're selling one bedroom, Full self-contained hall, everything for uh, 
uh, 10,000 Ghana cities. Whoa. Yes, that's what we were selling. Some even bought theirs, 7,000. You know, I was there when the drivers of HFC, then the HFC mm -hmm. came to me. Now, can you do something for us? We are qualified for only 10,000 Ghana CD. I said, yes, I can do something for you. So we put a design together and we built for them. And they were happy. Now people, some of them have 10 years into three bedrooms, four bedrooms. <laughs> yes, they were happy because Blue Rose is a solution. We believe that we are there to be a solution. Anybody who comes to us with a challenge, we must be able to help him to solve it. Wow. Wow. He, he gets, mm. It's not just to make money because how many houses will I stay in? Mm. This is my first house, and I believe I'll stay here till the time I die. <laughs> <laughs> Let me take a quick break and come back and find out mm. that. In this mm. present climate, you know, gone are the days when you could build a house for 10,000 cities. Is affordable housing still a reality? Stay tuned, we're coming back. Thank you very much for staying and I'm sure you're picking a thing or two on this beautiful interview. But I want to find out uh, real estate in today. But before we go on, I want to know the wife's name and the children's okay. name. We have to give them a shout out to Okay. Because okay. they, 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 they were there in Obrasha. Oh, yeah. Uh, and I know your wife loves my wife. Yeah, yeah. Well, very much. Very much. He's a big follower of your wife. You see. <laughs> so what's, what's her name? Uh, Angela. Aqua. Angela Aqua. Angela Mamiska Aqua. Mamiska Aqua. That's a nice name. Yeah. And uh, the first... I married her at the age of 21. That's early. And this year will be her 58th birthday, September. We are, com we are coming for a party. <laughs> <laughs> we, we are all coming to the party. <laughs> and then the first, the kids? Uh, my first boy is called Jeremy Akujue Isamboa Aqua. Mm -hmm. Then the second one is called Ezekiel Nanjesi Aqua. Mm -hmm. Then the third one is called Frederick Kujo Chawi Aqua. Mm -hmm. And the fourth boy is called David Ebo Aqua. David Ebo to Aqua. Mm -hmm. And the last girl is Susanna Mamiska Aqua. I have two prophets, one a pastor and a king. The first two are prophets. prophets. The third one is a pastor. Okay. He's, you know, he's pursuing engineer, but in our house, that's, that's how we that, see it. Yes. Yeah. Then the last boy is a king. It's called David. David. <laughs> David is a king. And the last girl, Susanna, is a mother to them. To everybody. Yeah. And I'm sure Susanna can wrap <laughs> daddy around her little finger just no, like that. No, no. He does more than the mom does. <laughs> <laughs> Susanna will get her way definitely. Daddy's yeah. girl. That's nice. Yeah. That's nice. But in the present climate, is Blue Rose still able to solve, so have solutions? I believe that, yes, uh, we are still in the process of giving the solution because that, uh, that is our passion, mm. to give affordable housing. And you see, house is, is a lifelong property. Mm. So you don't expect to take your pocket money and just go to a shop and buy a house. Mm. It's something that you must be disciplined, you must plan, and it must also hurt you a little. Mm. I will always say that mortgage is one of the perfect way to acquire a house. Okay. You get mm -hmm. because you go, you take a mortgage, maybe 10, 15 years to pay. Because people bought and 20 years they are not able to build. You go around, you see a lot of uncompleted houses, mm. but mortgage you have a complete house. Mm -hmm. You buy according to your your pocket. Yeah. Then you can also upgrade. Mm -hmm. But people are afraid to own. Because, but they are not afraid to rent a house. Because when you rent a house, you pay for the landlord, yeah. but the house is not yours. Yeah. People borrow money to pay for rent. Mm -hmm. Why not borrow a uh, money to buy a house? Mm -hmm. you, see, you see the difference? Mm -hmm. You borrow money to pay for a rent. Mm -hmm. And the same rent, you can borrow that money mm -hmm. and pay as a down payment. They will give you 10, 15 years to pay. And life things keep changing. Mm -hmm. So when your thing, your life changes, you know, when yeah. you have your first house, you can later get a, your dream house mm -hmm. when things change. Mm -hmm. So I believe that everybody is in position, but you know, it's a decision that needs a bit of boldness. Because I'm telling you, when I was building my first house, for two years I wore one shoe. 
to wow. church to work every every time I just polish it, I put a token. When one side goes off, I put a token <laughs> and level it. These days, how many people put token on their shoes? No. Nobody. <laughs> when they have go away, it threw away. Throw away. You see, I I'm sorry. Uh, the time I was, you know, we were living the time that we found a way to maintain things. Yeah. These days, you know, anything gets spoiled, your TV gets spoiled, you have to throw away. Mm -hmm. Anything gets spoiled, you get. Mm -hmm. That's why when your marriage also gets get problems, you want to throw it away. We don't have to fix that. <laughs> we don't but want we, to fix this. Why should you? You will just polish it, put some talking. These days, when you say talking, nobody knows no, no, about no, talking. Talk about you put yeah. a talking at the side Co to balance it. Co then you coming. go. <laughs> so one shoe, you always nicely dressed, mm -hmm. but it's one shoe. You turn it around to church to work, and you are okay. okay. Mm. But someone wants to have 20 shoes. If you have 20 shoes, can you at the same time also oh, well. have a house? So you, you get our prices right. Mm -hmm. you get, mm. Even, you know, credit, how much we buy credit. If you put all together, you see that every man it can, build, it can buy some box of cement. Yeah. I don't say don't use a phone, <laughs> but know how no, you use it. Use phone. So I believe that uh, affordable houses mm -hmm. are still reality uh, 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 and people can acquire, but they should know what they want. Yes. Is, is your book on the market yet? Uh, this book, I did this book as a charity. Um, we sold some. Mm. Um, uh, Southern Bible School, uh, Assembly of God Bible School, they are also using it as, as one of their leadership book. And sometimes we go to schools and we give it to them. Okay. Because it's our way to also let Inspire people somebody. know that things just don't happen. You must go through some process. And people don't like to go through difficult times. I know. And you see, those difficult times that I went through, that has made me who I am. Yeah. Now, wherever you put me, I can survive. Wow. I know how to eat cassava without stew. I know how to eat rice with, you know, with just uh, margarine. But this is, if you cook some uh, uh, rice with that stew, you will say that, yeah, I'm a yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you must go through certain things for us to appreciate certain things. Because if you don't go through it, you no, know, I have cars. But you no, know, I can take torture with that, you know, it, it won't affect me. Wow. Because those mm -hmm. who take torture are also women being like mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. So I don't believe in what I have, but I thank God that he gave me the opportunity to go through all those difficult times. And that has been, you know, a good weapon for me. It has, it has. The true life story of the man born to serve, Ebo Aqua, founder and CEO of Blue Rose Limited. I see a lot of servitude in you always. You see, there was, when I came here, I was at North Kenesha some of those years. When we came here, we started a church at my porch. One day it rained, we couldn't go to church. We started, now it's a big church here, just behind me. Wow. It's a huge church. Our estate too, we have started another one, and it's also growing. So it's a way to also have, I'm not a pastor, there is a pastor, <laughs> a pastor. There. But God used me to, you know. So, and I, I thank God for all this uh, wonderful thing that comes to me. I met my wife, I didn't know so much about my wife. I just knew the first name, Angela. And I saw that that was my wife. I married her and 29 years, at least God has blessed us. Everything that we pray. Sometimes it's difficult, but it's part of the it's learning of experience. Yeah, well, this has been one of interesting interview, and I think if you haven't walked away with anything at all, just follow your passion and the money will come. Work your heart out, aim to do your best, and all other things will be added on. I mean, that's what I'm walking away with, but I'm sure there are other dimensions to this conversation that you will be walking away with. Ebo Aqua, who's the founder and CEO of Blue Rose Limited, and I'm sure if once you live in Ghana, you must have heard of Blue Rose. Major, major estates, you know, major building developments that they're doing, all because somebody came in and said, you know what, build me a house. He did it well. He brought other people, they brought other people, and today is a real estate magnet. My name is Nanan Sakwa. This has been very beautiful. But I always give you this number, which is 024-366-2001. 024-366-2001. That's Tanti's Fashions. They give me the shirts for the show, so give them a call. Get yourself a nice shirt. But until I come to you with another personality, this has been 
one beautiful conversation. Thank you so much, and I will thank you so much once again. You are welcome.